Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today because you can't afford lunch. And uh, <laughs> it's just the beginning of it. Before I get into it, please, as always, like the video, hit the subscribe button, and today we have a sponsor, Patriot Gold, and I'll cover them a little later. Uh, but let's get right into it. Things have gotten really bad when it comes to eating out. And the biggest problem lately has been with fast food. And one thing that has happened, especially here in California, is that they've just raised the minimum wage for fast food workers to $20 an hour. And you can say, isn't that great? Fantastic. I'm glad these people are going to make this money that they're going to now make if they work full time $800 a week working at a fast food restaurant. Problem with that is that you're going to be paying an astronomical fee for your burgers, fries, sandwiches, and everything. The problem with this is that the workers that are in different unions now are seeing this as the precursor for if they can get it, we can get it. And you're seeing that in New Jersey right now. You're seeing the hotel workers and linen workers that are saying that they want a minimum wage of $20 an hour to compete with what's happening around the country. This is outrageous. Now, I myself have been absolutely floored lately when you go out to lunch. I went and bought a burrito and a drink the other day and spent $14 and was like, okay, is there a mistake? Because I didn't look at the prices when I walked in the place. And, uh, oh, no, the drink's four fifty now for a large iced tea. And the burrito was, uh, um, you know, $10. So... It's gotten out of control, guys, completely out of control. McDonald's, you've heard the stories about Connecticut where the combo meal for a Big Mac is now $18. Who can afford this? People cannot afford to go to lunch. And the worst thing about this is that you're seeing people skip meals so that their kids can eat right now. And they anticipate that 60% of the people in this country don't have adequate money to pay for food. And this is not going out to dinner. This is not anything expensive. This is just living a normal life and not been able to pay for food. So that's tragic. The fact that people are making decisions on what they're going to buy in replace of eating out and in replace of food. So, you know, we'll all do go without so my kids can eat. And this is terrible. Now, hey, school lunches, people with school lunch programs, um, so many kids right now don't have a hot lunch. And some higher end cities, um, they don't have a free lunch program. So some of these kids go without. And one thing that always floored me was that I learned through Fran from Joseph Dreamhouse, which was a, a charity that we've supported for years now. And they prepare meals for uh, families that are hungry that need food. And, um, you know, September was Hunger Awareness Month, which is disgusting that we have to have something like that. But Fran has people that give them monthly uh, donations, and they do it month after month after month. And she had two more families drop off of that that couldn't afford to donate to the charity anymore. We're falling at hard times, Fran, we can't do this. So this is getting worse, guys. People cannot afford to eat out, people cannot afford fast food, not that it's healthy, you know, but you know, these bargain meals used to be a bargain. The dollar, uh, the dollar menu at McDonald's is going away in January. They're getting rid of that. And the main reason they say is that they're going to have a price increase, especially here in California. So who can afford this? I, I just, I, I try not to eat out and, uh, you know, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And when you think about it and you have kids and you have two kids, four kids, and you try to take them out, it gets become impossible. You cannot eat at some of these restaurants right now and get a deal on the food. It's just non-existent. So share your thoughts on this. You know, um, with the article about 60% of the people are going hungry and cannot afford food, it talked about ways to save money, buying locally, using coupons, uh, you know, making food yourself, the obvious things with that. And this Hi, is buddy, tragic that people have to live this way. Not that you want to go out to dinner, but you just want to be able to have the life and the option. And here's the thing. People don't want to go back to the office. We've talked about this, you know, extensively. 
and people have talked about how it costs again it's easily $75 a week to go out now if I have to go to work and when you add it up yeah that's about what it is so you know and that's the thing people don't want to bring a sandwich and stay at their desk. They want to get out of the office and get away, and I totally understand it, but people just can't afford it right now. So one thing we've also talked a lot about lately is insurance. And uh, I want to cover car insurance right now because there's a real problem right now. And uh, there's a man in San Diego, uh, Sergio Preciado, who was in a car accident getting on the 805 freeway, and he said, yeah, it was my fault, and you know, I was to blame. And uh, when they started doing the investigation on the accident, nobody was hurt. It was just car to car. When they started doing the investigation on the accident, they start asking him questions. Who lives with you? Who this? Who that? And he says, oh, I got my two kids that live with me that are 14 and 13. And they, they denied the policy. After the fact, he didn't divulge that he had other people living in the residence. So they denied his insurance policy after the fact. Now, NBC News got involved in this and says, wait a second, how can you leave this guy hanging with a $5,000 bill? Not only did they cancel his insurance, they sent him the premium back because they said he, quote, lied on his policy and didn't tell them that there was somebody else in the household. By the way, his kids are not old enough to drive. They don't have driver's license. And flash forward or flash back, about 15 years, and uh, oh, I, no, it's not 12 years now. And uh, I was getting insurance, and they wanted to know who was in the household. It was me, and my kids, and my my wife, and that's it. Well, we want the kids to sign off on this. No, they're seven and 12. Well, you, no, you're out of your mind. Well, we have to have a waiver. That, you're out of your mind. I'm not agreeing to that. They're never going to drive the vehicle. And I ended up changing insurance because of this guy with what an imbecile he was with that. But what this is going to give you guys is this is the insurance companies trying to find ways to cancel your policy. They're going to do everything they can not to pay on claims. They can talk about fire damage and fire risk in California. And it was windy this week, so there could be fire. It's insane, guys. It's absolutely ludicrous to think that your your uh, child should be on your insurance. Now, for you insurance people out there that are going to write me and tell me, oh, you don't understand. It's a very common uh, practice that we do. Good. Um, I would sue my insurance man and, and if they did this to me. And that's it. So he called, Sergio called the insurance company, and they can't drive. Why would I even tell you about this? So they felt that he misled them and they did that. Now guys, this is insanity. This is insanity because what's happening now is in Australia, they're not going to insure electric cars. And I'm like, really? Well, yeah, there's fire risk with electric cars. You guys hear about that? Oh, okay. I guess when they catch on fire, it's very difficult to put them out. How about this one? Because there's a story below on it. They don't want the electric cars to go on the ferries because if the ferry's out in the middle of the water and they catch fire, there's going to be no way to put them out. So you're going to see more and more and more issues with these cars. Now, Stephen sends me this out of the UK, and uh, they're canceling the insurance for uh, um, electric vehicles because of the fire risk. Um, where do you park the car? Where is the car located at? Is it inside the house? Is it outside? Ridiculous. I have a friend of mine who... She has a, uh, a Hyundai car, and uh, she, they have not fixed the recall, which is the brake lines. And they say that the brakes could potentially catch on fire. Now think about this, a brake line. When you drive the car and you put your foot on the brake, they're concerned about that catching on fire, but they don't want the vehicle parked inside. She's called now four times, because I spoke to her today about this. She's called four times about, hey, when are you guys gonna fix the recall? We haven't decided yet. Just don't park the car inside. You're liable if the car is parked inside. We're not responsible. Could you imagine that? Now, if this is not a sign of the times, guys, that they're going to do everything they can to cancel your insurance, look out for this. Now, me being the businessman, being proactive, 
I called my insurance man. And again, I, I'm you know, a single guy. My kids don't live with me, but they come and go in the house. Well, Dan, anybody can drive your cars. Who cares? I don't care. You have 40 claims, Dan. Oh, I thought you were calling me, Dan. I thought you were calling me to, to tell me that the catalytic converter got stolen again. <laughs> no, it didn't. Not this week. Something has to be done about this, but be proactive. Call your insurance man and have this conversation with them because the one thing that everybody is telling me in their set, and every day we get emails about this. We get emails telling us that, um, hey, listen, your uh, premium went up, um, you know, 7%, 9%, and it goes up $200 a month. So, huh? How is that 7%? How is that 9%? It is insane. It is ridiculous, and the numbers just don't make any sense. Let's talk about our sponsor, Patriot Gold Group. You know, the Fed just decided not to raise interest rates, and we are not out of the woods yet. The economy is in a complete free fall. Look at everything right now. It's not good. You need to protect yourself. You need to get some insurance on your retirement. You need to contact Patriot Gold today and find out how a metals-backed IRA or 401k can benefit you. Call them, 888-330-1431. Let them know that I allegedly sent you. Guys, central banks are buying gold. Countries are buying gold. Gold has gone up substantially over the course of the last two months. Look at this today. Contact the number one rated Patriot Gold Group today 888-330-1431. They will send out a free investor guide. It's absolutely no obligation, but do this now before it's too late. You're going to see gold spike. All the experts talk about this. Contact them today. Either use the link below or call them at 888-330-1431 today. Mike sent me a letter talking about how his homeowner's insurance had gone up substantially to $200 a month, guys. That is outrageous, outrageous. And I wish that this was the only person telling me about things like this. Laura lives in Connecticut, and Laura was upset because she tries to conserve water. Her water company notified her that her water bill was going up $13.50 a month. And listen, we just had a little bit of an increase. And she's looked into it. And there's 107,000 people in the water district, okay? That's a million four hundred and forty-four thousand dollars extra a month. Did water go up that much in Connecticut? It's ridiculous, guys. It's absolutely outrageous. So you're not the only one being victimized by this right now. It's happening to everybody around the country. Hey, guys, the party's over, and everybody needs to accept that. There's going to be big changes for everybody. The Fed yesterday didn't raise interest rates, and we're supposed to celebrate that. Jerome Powell put his foot in his mouth and said, listen, we've got a great economy. Our GDP was at 4.9%. You know, one thing that's funny is our energy usage as a country, especially in manufacturing, is down. Okay? But, but we're, our growth is up. Sales are down. Companies are laying people off left and right. Here's an, another one for you. There's another thousand people that are getting let go from a Michelin plant that makes tires in Oklahoma. The entire town relies on this one plant. It's going to devastate an entire city, town, township, whatever you want to call it. Okay. There's going to be nobody having jobs. You're going to see restaurants closed, the dry cleaners, everybody. It's going to be catastrophic. Charles Schwab just steps forward and says that they're going to uh, lay off another 2,000 people to streamline the company and make things more efficient. Guys, come on. Okay, when are you going to look at this for what it really is? And, you know, believe this, that, that things are not doing well right now. The Atlanta Fed steps forward today and, hey, we want to revise uh, GDP for the fourth quarter down. And we only think it's going to be at 1.2%. So we're going to go from 4.9% to 1.2%. That would be like end of days, guys. That would be, you know, that uh, half the country fell into the ocean. I mean, think about that. 
1.2% GDP growth. We're supposed to believe the laughable 4.9%. You have all these companies going out of business. You have all these office buildings closing. You have hotels being given back to the bank. You have companies going out of business and now you have companies being forced with you know, larger wages. You know, the culinary workers in Las Vegas just got a massive increase so that they wouldn't strike. And again, it's going to make things like your hotel room and the valet and the food and everything at uh, any Las Vegas hotel much more expensive. This is the sign of the times because the party is over, guys. It's done. And Jerome Powell can try to kid us all he wants. And again, who voted for this guy? I didn't vote for this guy. There's another great test um, that's been done on EV cars about their the mileage and the miles per charge. And they're all off. There's lawsuits now. And, uh, you know, where do you get a refund for this? I was told I was going to get 350 miles. And you're seeing 18 and 35 and 40 percent less miles on cars than people were promised. Well, you don't understand, Dan. You know, if it's cold, it's going to affect the mileage. If you're towing something, it's going to affect your mileage. If your fat wife is in the car, it's going to affect the mileage. It's ridiculous, guys. Okay, it is ridiculous. Well, how many kids do you have? You know, sporting equipment that can slow a car down. That can that can hurt the the miles per charge. It's insane, guys. It's insane. And the other thing with the insurance companies that they're concerned about is the repair cost. The other thing that people sent me all these stories on are the repair costs that nobody seems to know the answer to. What's it cost to fix a battery? How do you replace it? What happens if you scrape the bottom of the car? Does it, you know, um, does it destroy the value of the vehicle? Okay. You know, does, is that it? And is that $30,000 to replace a battery? Who knows? One thing that's for some reason you guys have sent me a tremendous amount of is Michigan University has been accused of cheating and stealing sideline uh, signals, um, you know, during games and things like that. And they had uh, an assistant coach that went out. The story is below. I won't bore you guys with this. But if you don't think that people cheat in sports, you guys are out of your minds. You guys are out of your minds. My daughter and I today were laughing about this because when she was in high school, she worked uh, and she was in the digital film department. And she was the inaugural class for the digital film department. Wow, you're really good with a camera. You know what you could do? How would you like to earn some money? What if you went to watch baseball games and I paid you to watch baseball games and you filmed the games? Well, Amanda was an attractive girl, still is. And she would go and be basically anonymous and just film a baseball game. And then she would give it to the baseball coach at Foothill High School. And they would watch the game and they'd be able to see signals and signs. And the, the coach was very specific with how he wanted uh, the game filmed so he could see certain things. And nobody was the wiser about this. But if you don't think that this ha doesn't happen, you know, it happens in high school. You don't think it happens in college and in the pro ranks. It happens all the time. Does it make it right? Absolutely not. But was it like one of her first jobs ever? Yes. Oh, I get to go. Look, I'm filming and getting paid for it. So share your thoughts and all this stuff, guys. Again, the party is over, guys. And you can believe what you want, but do your own due diligence on your financial life. I tell everybody this. Talk to your insurance man. Tell him what's going on. Hey, call, hey, would you guys cancel our policy if you found out we had a relative living at the house? What if grandma moves into the house? Is grandma, who's, by the way, 85 and doesn't drive. Think about that. I have a friend, Drayton, that takes care of his parents. They now live with them. Are they supposed to be on his auto insurance when they don't drive? Think about that. What's the answer to that question? It's ridiculous. So if he gets in an accident, they're not going to pay. Think about that. You have to ask these questions right now of everything. I'm going to finish this video uh, with these last couple stories. And uh, first things first, guys, real estate's been in the news so much lately. But how about this one? And I thought this was an old story, but this came out this morning. From Zillow. Zillow is saying that they need people to understand that if they bought a property from July of this year moving forward, that it may take them as long as 13 and a half years to break even on the property. 13 and a half years. 
13 and a half years. This is going to be an utter disaster. People that have bought houses lately are going to find themselves financially upside down. There's a little game I always play with people when they say, oh, in 90 days, it's going to happen. Well, where were you 90 days ago? What was going on in your life then? Where were you 13 and a half years ago? Think about that. Okay. Think about that. Think about the metropolitan areas. Listen, you may have a nice city and it may only take six to seven years for you to be uh, positive, but most likely 10 years and some of these cities it's going to take 13 and a half years. Final, final story, uh, Disney. Disney's got problems, let's face it. Uh, looks like Disney's going to uh, sell ESPN as a separate unit and it could fetch as much as $24 billion. And I'm like, oh, who's gonna buy that? What network's gonna buy that? No, you have all these unique suitors that could potentially buy ESPN from Disney. Now, Verizon, the phone company, I thought that was pretty shocking. Bank of America was another one. I thought, Bank of America, spend $24 billion to buy television network, okay? Bank of America, this game brought to you by Bank of America. That's what you're going to see. And then the final one that was odd was Apple. Now, where's the Apple car that we were hearing about so much about? Is that here? Are you guys driving the Apple car? I just haven't seen one yet. <laughs> so please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Onward and upward, guys. You want to get a hold of me? Hello at iallegedly.com is the only email being answered. Hello at iallegedly.com. Onward and upward, guys. I'll see you soon. Thank you.